So I just thought about this inverse question from a pre-calculus student, and I think it's very tricky, and I'm thinking to assign this as an extra credit opportunity. So what I will do is, I will assign this to them first, and then collect it, and then I'll show them this video. But anyways though, we are going to find the inverse for x minus 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 4. And you should pause the video, and try this first to see if you can see the technical part. Done? Okay, let's take a look. So firstly, I think many of you guys noticed that the bottom can be factored in, and we get x minus 1, x minus 4. And you see, we happen to be able to cancel out the x minus 1. So we will just have 1 over x minus 4. Therefore, to find the inverse, we can just look at f of x is equal to that, right? And let's use the four-step process. Step 1, we write f of x as y. So we put y equals not this anymore. This is easier, right? So y equals 1 over x minus 4. Now, step 2. We are going to interchange x and y. We are going to swap x and y. We are going to switch x and y. Depends how you like to say it. Meaning, when you see y, it becomes x. When you see x, it becomes y. Just like that. Now, step 3. We are going to solve for this new y. And to do so, we can just multiply y minus 4 to both sides. So we have x times y minus 4, and that's equal to 1. And we can either distribute the x, or in fact, here we can divide both sides by x. It will be a little bit easier. So you see, y minus 4 is equal to 1 over x. And then we can just add a 4 to both sides. So y is equal to 1 over x plus 4. So step 3, done, because we got the y by itself. Now, step 4. This y is exactly our inverse. So we can just write it as the inverse f. That's equal to 1 over x plus 4. And then we are done, right? No, as I told you, it's not that easy. Otherwise, I wouldn't give this as an extra credit opportunity, right? Yeah. Anyways, what's going on here, though? This is wrong because we are missing a point. Because right here, notice how earlier we canceled out the x minus 1 and x minus 1. So we have to be careful. This and that, they are not exactly equal. They are only equal under the condition that x cannot be equal to 1. And in my opinion, the best way to investigate this is to look at the graph. So let's take a look at the graph right here. So we have 1 over x minus 4. If you just want to make the graph of this, firstly though, you should know the graph for 1 over x, which is just like this. This is y equals 1 over x. So now if you compare this and that, we have x minus 4. That means we just move this graph 4 times to the right. So we will have, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we have our vertical asymptote at x equal to 4, so VA at x equals 4. And the graph will still be like this, and like this. Done. But now, be really careful. If you were just graphing 1 over x minus 4, it would be like that. But our original function was written like this. So remember, originally x cannot be equal to 1. So we will have to go here, Go to x equals 1, which is right here, and then go to the curve. We have to erase that because we don't have that point. And we have to emphasize that by putting an open circle there. So we have a hole on the graph. Now, if you take a look right here, this is 1 over x plus 4. If you compare this graph and that, okay, of course the x and y got switched. And if you want to graph this, so I'll put it down right here, this will be like this. 1 over x plus 4 means you bring this graph 4 times up because the plus 4 was after the function, right? So it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we have this. And in fact, we have the vertical asymptote at 0, so we still have the vertical asymptote right here like this, and the graph will look like this. And then that. So if you do the reflection, if you do the flip, then 
you will get this and that. So this is the inverse, right? F inverse, and this is the original F. But now the question is, how about the whole? Because right here, if you just grab 1 over x plus 1, you don't have the whole. So that's why I will say you are missing a point because we don't have that right here, right? Now, we will have to figure out the x and also the y value for the whole. And to do so, well, I know x is equal to 1, but I cannot plug into here because otherwise, I will actually get 0 over 0. That's an indication that you possibly will get a hole on the graph. But just think about it. What if, if you just imagine the function were equal to this, if this were the function, right? 1 over x minus 1. But just imagine, what happens if we were just dealing with this as our function, 1 over x minus 4? Then in that case, we can just plug in 1 into this x nicely, right? So, all we have to do to figure out the y value is this. Go ahead, plugging 1 into here, we get y equals 1 over 1 minus 4, which will just get negative 1 third. So the y value here is exactly negative 1 third. And that is a coordinate of the whole, which is 1 for the x, and then negative 1 third for the y. Now, remember, whenever we have the original and the inverse, the x and y got switched. If we had a whole at 1 comma negative 1 third, that means on the inverse, we should have what? The whole at negative 1 third, let me just indicate that. We should have a whole at negative 1 third comma 1, right? On the inverse, this is the inverse. So that means negative 1 third is somewhere here, and then 1 is right here. So you have to erase that and then put an open circle here. So the hole is right here, all right? So that's the idea. But now, how are we going to write an equation to generate a hole for this function, though, for the inverse? But now, how are we going to write an expression to generate a hole for this expression? Ready? Okay. So here's the deal. I'm just going to multiply this top and bottom by something that will give us negative one third as a zero. I'm going to multiply by 3x plus 1 and then over 3x plus 1. So that's the part that you have to do in order to really get the inverse for this function. And now, why does this work though? Because remember, imagine if this right here gives us the whole, right? So that's when x is equal to, let me just indicate that. That's when x is equal to negative one third. Now, multiply three to both sides. So three x is equal to negative one, add one to both sides. So three x plus one is equal to zero. And remember, as I mentioned earlier, when we cancel out the x minus 1, we have a hole at x equal to 1. But right now, I need to have a hole at x equal to negative 1 third. So I must have this factor, 3x plus 1. That's why we will have to do it here and here. So now let me just combine them together to make it look nice. This right here, I will have to get the common denominator, so x and x here. So that means we have on the top is 4x plus 1 times 3x plus 1. Over, on the bottom we have the x, and also another 3x plus 1. And then I'm just going to multiply out the top. So this times this, we get 12x squared. This times this is 4x, but we have another 3x here. So that will be plus 7x. And lastly, plus 1. Over, distribute the x, we get 3x squared plus x. And this right here will be the inverse for this function. All right, just real quick, I want to show you guys how to do the reflection to get the inverse. So this right here is our original graph, right? We have the hole right here. And now to get the inverse, you are going to hold the diagonal, y is equal to x. And then you flip that. And as you can see, this is the graph with the hole right here, negative 1 third comma 1. And I actually have been thinking, 
What if if you run through the four steps based on this expression? I think it's possible, but I don't really think you want to like solve like a quadratic, right? Because you have y here, y squared minus five y, and then you want to get the y by itself. Not the easiest. Plus, in that case, you are really missing the point. 